Hey everyone, how y'all doing? My name is Mateo and I am from Machine Masters. Today, I have another free plugin overview from Flux. They have a transient design tool that they offer for free called Bittersweet, which can add punch and clarity to your mix. First things first, let's take a listen to this plugin in action. I've got eight bars of this beat selected and I'm gonna bring the plugin in and out while I play it for you. From what I just played you right there, bringing the plugin in and out, you could hear that the beat sounded tighter in the low end, it was punchier, those hi-hats and snares were just popping out, and the sample that was used in it didn't sound so distant, it actually sounded a little tighter, it sounded more focused. So now that you've heard a little bit of what Bittersweet does, let me explain exactly what it is. It's a transient design tool. Now, there are many of you out there that are probably familiar with one of the most famous transient design tools out there called Transient Designer, made by the company SPL. Now, this plugin right here does something similar where it detects transients in the audio and it allows you to manipulate the transient to either make it have more attack or less attack. Now I'm going to zoom into one of the audio files here and show you what I mean by transient for those of you that don't know what that is. So if I blow up this snare track over here, we can see here that these are the audio waves. Now the initial peaks of the audio is what I'm referring to when I mention transients. Now what these plugins do is it detects the initial transients it allows you to either increase the attack of it, so making it louder, or decreasing it, so smoothing it out. Now, this can be beneficial in a number of different applications. Maybe you want to add more snap to your snare, so you throw it on the snare, and you'd increase the attack on the snare, and you got more bite there. Or you can go another way. Say you have a hi-hat, and the hi-hat just has a little too much snap to it, and it's a little harsh. You can decrease the transient on the hi-hat, and make it a little sweeter sounding. So let's get right into this. Now, if we look at the center of the plugin, we got a knob here that lets you slide all the way to bitter or all the way to sweet. And what bitter and sweet refer to is going up to bitter increases the attack, going down to sweet smoothens out the attack and decreases it. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is output gain. This allows you to adjust the output of the audio. Now, this is very important for when you want to determine objectively whether the plugin is doing what you want it to do, because you don't want to be distracted by the audio getting louder or quieter. So if I increase the attack on this, what's going to happen is that the audio is going to sound louder. Now, I can't really tell accurately if it's doing what I want, so I'm going to bring the output down, and then I'm going to play it back and bypass it and bring it back in to make sure that the audio is matched. There we go, much better. And the same thing goes if I bring it all the way down to sweet. It's actually going to decrease the audio quite a bit, so you would compensate by increasing the output gain. That being said, Flux has actually incorporated a utility on here that actually automatically adjusts the output gain for you depending on whether you go to bitter or to sweet. And it's called the link, which I've selected now. Take a look at the output gain as I'm moving the knob, and you'll see it move accordingly. Oh, 
how I love that so much. That just makes life so much easier. And I wish every plugin would have something like that. The next thing we're going to look at is these three options right here of fast, medium, and slow. These should be set accordingly to the type of sounds you have the plugin on. If you're using the plugin on fast transient sounds like drums or percussions, you'd want to set it to fast. If you are using the plugin on sources like bass, synths, or vocals, you'd want to have this on medium or slow as those typically have slower transient peaks. The next thing we're gonna look at is period. Period is the range in time that tells the plugin which transients it will process. I will admit this description is somewhat vague in the manual, but when I use my ears to hear what it's doing, it sounds like the longer you set it, more of the transients are affected by the plugin. So I'm gonna start off by setting it to 20 milliseconds. Now this is a short time frame for the plugin to really react to transients. So you may not really hear much of a difference in punch in this when I increase it all the way to bitter. But let's take a listen. Okay, so it did add a bit of punch. Let's move this up to 50 milliseconds and this will give the plugin more time to affect more transients. Oh yeah, definitely heard more of the snare pop in there, more of the claps popping. Now let's increase the period all the way to 100 milliseconds. And we should hear even more transients being affected by this plugin. There you go. So I would actually adjust the period while the music is playing, but it does this weird thing where it jitters the audio and it just sounds terrible. So I just thought I'd spare you guys that. But by all means, experiment with that. On different sound sources, you will need to adjust it differently. Now let's move over to mode. So mode, you have three settings, main, center, and stereo. What main refers to is that the plugin will affect the overall stereo image, both left and right channels equally. Now, when you switch it to center, what this refers to is the center image of your stereo. So that means everything in the middle will be affected, but everything on the sides will not be affected by this plugin. And lastly, stereo is the sides of the stereo channel, even though they probably should have more appropriately named that they didn't so stereo is actually not the whole stereo image that it affects it actually only affects the sides and does not affect the midsection let me play this beat back for you with the three different modes so you can hear what it does so i'm going to start on main i'm going to crank up the bitter and let's play the beat Cool, so I went from main, then to center, then to stereo, and then back to main. So you could hear what each of the modes did to the stereo field. Now, I will warn you guys, this does employ some phasing techniques in order to make this possible when you set it to center and stereo. So make sure you're not going crazy with this because it will put a bunch of your audio out of phase if you get too crazy with it. So if you have a correlation meter, keep your eye on it and make sure you're not going into the negatives with it. Last but not least, we have bypass. And I feel like bypass is pretty self-explanatory. It just takes the plugin out of the signal chain. So that was the overview of the free plugin from Flux called Bittersweet. I encourage you all to try out this plugin. It is free and it comes in all the major audio formats such as AAX, audio units, and VST. And did I mention it was free? Yeah. 
Uh, it's fun to use. It's pretty easy to use. It's great. Uh, try it out. See what you guys think of it and let us know. Thanks again to all of you that checked out this tutorial. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about what we covered in this tutorial, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Also, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, also leave that in the comment section below. As always, please like and share this video and subscribe to Machine Masters to keep up with all our latest tutorials. Thank you everyone, have a great day.